So the death bars are this analysis that Bob Kaplan did for me, mm, God, probably about six months ago, a year ago, which is basically just causes of death by decade. And um, I double click on accidental deaths. So I have a, we, we, you know, this, this death bars is so cool because you can double click on it all over the place. And once, once you call out accidental deaths, you realize something really interesting. Unlike cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, which are very age dependent, meaning the older you get, the more the incidence goes up. Generally with cancer, it actually comes down a little bit in the last decade. Accidental deaths are basically the same forever. Once you are reach the age of 10, so from 10 year olds to 20 year olds and 80 year olds to 90 year olds, they all have the same number of accidental deaths per year, more or less. What differs dramatically is the type of accident. So in young people, it is disproportionately, sadly, overdoses that are the lion's share followed by automotive accidents. In the oldest subset of the population, it becomes almost entirely accidental falls. It is, and when you show somebody this graph, cause it's so pronounced, I've, I've never seen a person who doesn't just stop in their tracks because they cannot believe how much morbidity and mortality results from falling and frailty once you reach about the age of 70, 75. I mean, the data is there to back it up. The, the, I believe, I may butcher this citation, but I believe there was a study by Bob Wolf that was kind of a review that showed essentially after age 65, you could tie the majority of deaths to some kind of lack of muscular strength or lack of muscle. And if you look at They've done these um, meta-analyses of mortality mm -hmm. showing that your lean body mass is inversely, inversely proportional to your uh, risk of mortality after age like 50. And by the way, strength is even slightly higher. So, yep. so the hazard ratio for being strong to not strong is about 3.2 for all-cause mortality. Think about that. Which is a big hazard ratio. It's a freaking staggering hazard ratio. But you're talking about on the level of smoking right there. No, it's higher than smoking, actually. Smoking yeah. is about two. So to put that in perspective, right? Um, end stage renal disease is about three. And the only thing that's higher, and I talked about this on another podcast, is elite, meaning top two per top 2.5 percentile of VO2 max compared to bottom 25th percentile of VO2 max. That wow. has a delta of five, 5.1 5 wow. is the hazard ratio. And of course, these are not mutually exclusive. So why not have yep. remarkable cardiorespiratory fitness, muscle mass, and strength? Yep. So I think one of the big barriers, especially with the type of client you're talking about, is, well, I don't want to get too bulky or too muscular. Can you dispel the myth of accidental muscle, please? Yeah. So as someone who's spent their entire adult life trying to get too muscular, and basically just looks really fit in a t-shirt. Um, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. You're going to be okay. <laughs> and if you do start to get too muscular, you can always just back off. That's, <laughs> it's pretty easy. That's like saying, I mean, literally let's use a finance, financial comparison. I'm worried about getting too rich. I might get too rich and you know, like, okay, okay well, if you're worried about that, you know, we've got some great philanthropies that we can introduce you to. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, it's like getting in a car and worried about becoming a NASCAR driver spontaneously, you know, the, the, just the amount of benefit you will get from three times a week, 30 to 40 minutes of resistance training, not even crazy intense resistance training, just an amount that forces your body to adapt will be unbelievable in terms of your level of fitness and your ability to live a long, healthy life. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice 
from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 